welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 148. This episode is with my friend Christina Morse, who you might know best as the host of the fantastic Closing Credits podcast, or as the sound designer for the new audio drama The Adventures of the Zolan Dart, that we actually just worked on together. She's fantastic. This episode is so long overdue, and I was so excited that we actually got to finally make it work. And we talk about a ton of stuff. We talked about her growing up trying basically every sport, how dangerous she is when passing a ball, the many instruments she's played, starting college at 13 years old. I know, right? Uh, We talk about how she ended up working in sound, her show, The Closing Credits Podcast, and so much more. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 148, with Christina Morse. Theme song time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get it. You get it. You understand. I'm very excited that I guilted you into this. Oh, um, my gosh. Yep. For a lot of reasons. Um, But also, <laughs> and I say this every time, I get kind of nervous when I have my friends on because the, so much of the show is getting to know someone that I don't know. But we actually talk a lot. <laughs> so it's uh, it's different, you know? what else is there to know oh, exactly no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good point i i do feel like we're we're kindred spirits in the sense that we both like being busy do you find that to be true yes yeah yeah how, how many projects are you working on right now <laughs> <laughs> am i counting yours uh no no uh actually yes why not <laughs> Okay, let's say about five to six. Five to six. I have a problem. I don't oh. like sleeping. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm with you. I'm with you. It's like, why would I sleep when I could be working? <laughs> Except this morning. I did sleep in uh, a little late just because. Um, oh, good. There, it was just like sirens were happening all night. And Oof. I got curious. So I went on the police scanner. And Sweet. I was like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't need to hear any of that. But Oh, no. But it just went on. I was like, it's five. I need to sleep. I need to sleep. <laughs> just catch the guy already. Goodness. That's right. He's over here. That's funny. Yeah, they did know. It was in yeah. somebody's backyard. I was like, you know what? Just He's right there. Just come on. <laughs> but they were afraid he was going to use the trampoline in that person's backyard to oh. jump the fence. <laughs> oh, my. That's hilarious. My first brain was like for recreation. Like he just in the midst of running from the cops, like, oh, trampoline's here. Nice. <laughs> Like that's its own sort of trap. Just go for it. Uh, it, it was very strange, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I feel you. I feel you. I grew up in a rough neighborhood and that happened a lot with like helicopters circling over our head looking for somebody. Ooh. Yeah. It was usually our backyard that they went through. So we're like, oh, 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 oh there, there he is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty wild. So I know that you're in... The Sacramento area or in oh, Sacramento? I'm a little bit outside of Sacramento. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm I'm closer to like Roseville. Got it. Nobody's going to know unless they're from here. Ah, Roseville. Yes. Yes. Of course. Of course. Are you so are you from Sacramento? I am not actually. Uh, see, look, I'm learning things already, Christina. We're doing it. So where uh, wait, where are you from? You're from California. I am. Okay, okay. I'm getting closer. But where? Where I don't, in California? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would have put five dollars uh, on Sacramento. Yeah, because I've been here almost my whole life. I think oh, yeah? I was technically three weeks old. So Oh, okay. So it was like <laughs> you the you went to the hot you came out of a hospital somewhere else, but then you grew up where you're at. Yeah. I gotcha. I was born in, I never remember which, like the hospital is in a certain area, but I 
technically grew up a little bit for a few weeks in different areas. I want to say Tustin. Okay. Okay. Tustin area. Good old Tustin. Yeah. It's Orange County. I think. Okay. That's way south. Yeah. It's way, way down there. And then my parents moved up here after I was born, mainly my mom. Mm -hmm. um, because after, like immediately when I was born, my dad would like needed to be shipped off. Gotcha. He, he was in the Marine Corps. So he, oh. they were like, just, just get the baby out. I need to go. I need to go to <laughs> Kuwait. Let's go. Oh, no. <laughs> it was, at least that's what I've been told, but. Sure. Yeah, I don't think he came back till I was after my first birthday. Really? Yeah. Wow. Not that I remember any of this. Sure. That probably but... best. Kudos on your mom though. You're still uh, alive. Think... Right? It's probably why she moved up to live with her uh mom and granddad. Yeah, my that's granddad. smart. That's smart. That's smart. That's cool. I don't think I knew your dad was a Marine. Uh I don't I think know. I really talk about it too much. Sure, sure. See, another thing we have in common. So my dad was in the Navy. Look at this. Oh, cool. Look at this. And also similar situation. I was born in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, because that's where the nearest hospital was. But we lived in Maple. And then when I was six, moved down to Florida. So the oh, beginning cool. stages was moving around and doing things and then growing up in a place like that. Interesting, Christina. We're peeling layers back. So if your dad was in the Navy, can you, are you a pretty good swimmer? Do you get seasick? You know, here's the thing. Um, I'm a passable swimmer. Like I can, I can for sure swim. Um, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm doing laps, you know, I've also got asthma. So that just makes things more fun. Oh, you know, I don't get seasick. I don't think I've ever been seasick. So that's good. But you know, there's still time. We'll see what You're happens. You're very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get seasick? Seasick, car sick, air sick. It's oh, really? Terrible. I can't play video games even on a plane or in a oh, car. No. I can't read a book. Sure. So I can sort of watch movies. But okay. That's good. I tried to breathe. watch like Hot Fuzz on the way to, I think, or no. Yeah. It, I think I watched Blues Brothers for the first time on my flight to Chicago for a Star Wars celebration because I'd never seen it going sure. to Chicago made sense. But then once that ended, I watched Hot Fuzz and that's a lot of flashing lights and a lot of cuts. Yeah. And I'm like, I love this movie, but I'm going to vomit. This is a terrible <laughs> idea. That's fun. Monique is the same way. She can't, she gets motion sickness really easy. It's so like in a car, she can't like, we'll be in the back seat. Like if someone's driving us and I'll be like, hey, check this out. She's like, I can't. It'll make her sick really easily. No. Yeah, it's no good. It's no good. You just have to always have them in the front seat, at least. Always. If you put us in the back seat, we have to be in the middle so we can stare at the road. Uh huh. Don't get car sick. That's uh -huh. something new I learned like six years ago. Sure. <laughs> Your own pro tip. Yeah, because I was I was always in the back seat because my mom's also car sick. So sure. my dad's just like, I hate driving these windy roads with two sick people constantly <laughs> like, we have to pull over. We're going to vomit. <laughs> but swimming wise, I can swim. Can you? You're like, swim, swim? Like com oh, competitively swim? I swam competitively. What? From, uh, like elementary school age till I was maybe 18. No way. And I qualified for the Olympics and went, what? I'm not going. Peace out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to China as much as I wanted to. I was like 17, 18, but I qualified for that really, really long swim that what? you do in the river outside. What? And I'm like, my 18 year old brain went, the air is going to be so crappy if I try to swim <laughs> in that. And if I try to like, suck in air as i'm swimming it's gonna no thank you i sure the air is what did you in you're like smog yeah That's... i didn't know that plus i wasn't super like swimming was my favorite sport because mm -hmm. that meant i didn't need to technically be on a team I guess. oh smart smart unless you're in the medleys which i always did too sure so swimming was a huge swimming and soccer were the two big ones. Oh, dude, I love soccer. 
Soccer is so much fun. It's the best. It's it's soccer is my favorite sport. I just love it. And I love watching it. I, I always describe to people like uh, soccer to me is like football, except every few seconds, there's an interception. It's like, Oh, Oh, Oh. And it's so hard to score. And then when you do, that's why they, you know, yell goal for five minutes. It's great. I love soccer. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I kind of, I miss all those sports, but yeah. I haven't really been catching up on any soccer watching of my own. Sure. Sure. Because it's a lot and yeah. I don't typically watch sports. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I didn't even watch the Super Bowl. Um, Me neither. I was like, oh, it's on. Oh, oops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm busy. I'm working on five projects. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind yeah. of that. Kind of. <laughs> I'm with you. I get really into the World Cup when that happens. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I kind of, I'm, I'm too busy. We're doing, we're doing things, Christina. You know, we don't have time. Do you have a team you follow? Uh, no. I've tried several teams, but I never really stuck to one. And then one of my best friends, he's like obsessed with, uh uh manchester united and then i have another friend that's a really big liverpool fan and i was like okay all right all right so then i can't you know pick one of those and uh you know what i like to do because i don't have any loyalties specifically with the world cup i see who i i like i'll pick a team early on be like i really like this one and then i'll follow them until they get knocked out and then i'll find another one and then i'll keep going and then i'll get to the world cup and i'll be like this is now my team so I kind of get to bounce. It's not bad. It's not bad. Did you have one? Uh, not really. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm kind of the same. I just follow whichever. Yeah, um, exactly. Like, I just want them to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You Plus, know? I love the coaches. Their coaches are so much more fun than ours. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I didn't realize so, you were into sports growing up, though. That's cool. Oh, no, I wasn't. Um, I, mean... I stopped soccer at 14 because like swimming was something I actually enjoyed, but sure. my mom was like, put, put Christine in every sport we can so she can get a scholarship. Oh, uh, okay. Long game here. Yeah. So when you're like 14 and you're on the soccer field going, I don't want to do anything, mom. You're just <laughs> that kind of bratty teenager. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's like, I was having fun and I didn't care about winning. Sure. But when you're the goalie, ooh, it's the worst. You were a goalie? And I had, you know, I had those stupid um, goggles that wrapped around your head. Of course. Oh, <laughs> uh, because I, I don't like wearing contacts. They hurt my eyes. But yeah, that's fair. I was a goalie for pretty much everything but like middle field because I don't run fast. Sure. I run long distance, but not fast. It's just, they're like, right. put me a goalie. I'm like, please, no. That's funny. Did you so did you ever take a soccer ball to your head? Only during practice. And ah. so I, wow. that was the year when I was 14. And we had a coach who he's from Argentina. So he was really tough on us. Oh, and this right. is just a local league. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh, just random kids put their or like they're put into the teams. And I was playing goalie and a girl. Um, she kicked the ball at me, but I wasn't ready. And it just smacked me in the face and broke my glasses. Oh no. I cried. Uh, Yeah. I was like, I can't cry because this coach hates crying, but he actually like sat me on his lap and he's like, it's okay to cry. (laughs) I was like, this hurts real bad. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, even with my no crying rule, that looked like it hurt. Come here. Come here. (laughs) Uh, I did get her back though. There you because go. At least as a goalie, if I needed to kick, I could kick it to the person. Ooh, like if genius. I needed to. But I have that. I, this has been a thing in my whole life. Don't ever tell me to pass to you because I will hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, yeah, kick it to me. And I'm like, right. okay. And I drop kicked it to her face. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. Oops. Happens every time elementary school teachers like hey hit the tennis ball to me and i'm like okay smack in the face <laughs> no i think that's why swimming's better it's just me or if i'm in a team just tag me in i don't need to pass anything to people sure it's, it, all good. it's safer for everyone else that they stick you alone in a pool 
your yes. dangerous weapon, Christina. I've always said this, but I'm glad I know it's for sure now. I'm dangerous to myself because I have a huge scar on my knee because I tried to do hurdles one day in junior high. Oh no. Which one's and then those? I hurt myself. That's the jumping over the things, right? Yes. Ooh. Ooh. No training. They were like, yeah, everyone <laughs> just try just out for do whatever. It. And I'm like, okay. Got the first one, second one, fell. Oof. And there was just a bloody smear on the track for ah. a couple months. Sheesh. <laughs> You're like, Christina was here. This is me. And oh, I couldn't man. walk for three months. Cool. And that was interesting. Goodness. Did, were you on crutches? No. That's probably best. I've never used crutches, but I imagine they're, they're not fun. terrible. I broke my foot my freshman year of high school. And mm -hmm. uh, opening doors with crutches is not fun. It's not fun, Christina. I would imagine not. I don't, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend how, it. How'd you break your foot? Uh, well, um, I was standing on a desk and a buddy of mine pushed the desk and I landed on my foot wrong and just, uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, I wish it was a cool story. Yeah. Not this one. Have you ever broken anything? Uh, no, <laughs> not I... on your person. But on not knock on wood has not <laughs> happened. I was not a dangerous teenager or kid. I was, I was pretty much Arnold from Magic School Bus. Okay, okay, that's not bad. It's not a bad place you, to be. You, you, I would be that kid. I was the annoying teacher's <laughs> pet, head of the class. <laughs> didn't understand why people acted like children, and I wanted to be an adult so bad. Sure. And they would <laughs> jump off, and I would go, "You can't do that. We're gonna get in trouble." You sure. Can't walk. That's you can get in trouble, which technically I think is like illegal is to spit. Sure. Um, but they're not gonna pull you over for it. But yeah, get out of here. Don't step on the grass. The teacher said not to. Meanwhile, you're pelting people with different kinds of balls. <laughs> not my fault if you tell me. Like I did basketball. Okay. Same thing happened. A oh, friend no. of mine at the time during practice was like, hey, pass the ball. I'm like you want me to bounce it to you? Oh, okay. And I bounce it, smacked her in the face. And I'm like, this is why I don't want to do sports. Just put me as somewhere else where I don't need to pass to people. Sure. <laughs> that is hilarious. You've become that person that's like, just don't, don't ever go bowling with her. You'll die. Just don't oh. do it. <laughs> I, I am terrible at bowling. I did take bowling for, uh, I guess, a PE course. Yeah. Okay. Wait. How good are you at dodgeball? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> you've um, never. You've been too scared to test it. Probably. I best. don't think I really played dodgeball in high school. I went to two different high schools, so. Oh really? I didn't really. I don't really remember the first two years, but the other two we didn't. It was a charter school, so we didn't really have much. Sure. Sure. And okay. It was like. 10 of us or 20 of us okay okay but I, and i was too busy and if we had pe probably at my second high school i was already gone because i was i did college from age 13 oh to 23 <laughs> trying to figure out a major that i had uh, how what hold on explain this to me you're uh, huh? yeah okay yeah 13 Mo mom wanted a scholarship Wow. I guess, or because that's also why I did so many different instruments for a time too. Everything was just like figure something out, but it was sure. never instrument I liked. Um, oh, maybe okay. it was okay, but oh, that's uh, cool. Uh, and also, my mom thought like, so I I turned nine, and I saw October Sky, and I nice. told my parents I want to be a probe engineer. I know that's not what he is in the movie. Right. I want to make probes. Okay. And my mom's like, my Asian mom, my Thai mom went, life plan. I must make you one. I'm like, no, mom, no. <laughs> so the life plan was to graduate with an associate's by 18 and then wow. transfer to Cal Poly or Stanford or Caltech or something. Dude. It's, That's intense. 
it's not fun because <laughs> you're going to high school during the day or you skip well second high school I got to skip out mm-hmm. first high school they did not allow any of my college courses to oh boy. transfer I guess mm-hmm. so instead of being in calculus I would be in algebra two. Oh. And I was okay. like, I don't, I don't want to redo any math courses. Give me out. I don't, yeah. I don't like it. Same. But yeah, I changed my major way too many times. I turned 18 <laughs> and went, and how about no? <laughs> <laughs> I love science, but I mean, I switched between science and other things many, many times. So sure. <laughs> but just That's fine. wild. So you did like everything. It's like, what sports did you play and what instruments did you play? Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to count like horseback riding because that's just my granddad's house because he okay. had horses. That's but, still cool though. Um, let's see. I I actually went to football camp once during the summer. What? It's weird because I did science camps. Like my mom's <laughs> a tiger mom. She's just like, you got to do everything and you got to be the best at everything. Got it. And, understood like i understand it but but i wanted fun but there's no such thing as fun i did soccer i did swimming a little bit of football tried softball but the girls were so mean that i didn't like it so i only lasted maybe a season that's fair i did baseball with boys which also is not fun as right understandable let's see soccer football baseball softball baseball i just got pelted by baseballs anytime i tried to like oh, hit. No. <laughs> and Jeez. i'm like why why are the boys so mean and the girls just like try to tackle me in softball <laughs> oh, no. i i was a cheerleader for three years what i am not flexible or i i used to i did karate i know this uh, one I I did I did too many thing tennis for a little bit. That's a lot. It's pretty much like all the sports, um, I guess maybe except like cricket or something. <laughs> sure. We didn't have that here or lacrosse was not a thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Out yeah. of out of any of those sports, you said you really like swimming. Were there yeah. any other ones that you liked or were really good at or both? Soccer. That, yeah. I was a bratty fourteen year old. But I, 14 or 16, I keep forgetting because it's like age 14 to 16. So I was right. between those two ages. But mm-hmm. we won that year. That was a good year. Oh, sweet. I think that was, so yeah, it was 16. It's got to be 16 then. We won the tournament for the 14 to 16 age group of girls. Um, I think I did good at a different sport. And then swimming, I was winning a bunch too. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, qualify yeah, for the Olympics. That's wild. Freestyle. I mean, it's the easiest one. It's still. I'm glad counts. it wasn't breaststroke. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at like I'm good at breaststroke, but it's so tiring. I don't sure. like backstroke because you can't see where you're going, mm, and fair. I'm always the slowest. So I'm like, oh, don't do the I am medley. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> you do freestyle, backstroke, breaststroke, free. And that okay. second one, I'm just like, I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to hit the wall. I know it. Sure, sure. So freestyle is just like, just swim, right? I, I know nothing about this stuff. Yeah, it's okay. pretty much that. Plus, I had really big feet as a kid. Right on. I had like size. Like flipper size. Nine sized? women's as a teenager. Nice. <laughs> like the size I have now. Sure, sure. Your feet just grew first. (laughs) I guess. But I was working out a crap ton since my dad had a workout room. He would have me like lift weights and not really cardio, just lift weights. So when I would go beyond the little deck thing that you need to jump into, Mm -hmm. the other moms are just like, is she fat or is is she just big? I'm like, (laughs) you don't know what's going to happen, girl. (laughs) I'm going to get the blue ribbon. (laughs) <laughs> i'm what they call a champion <laughs> that's awesome though i have to or somebody yeah. will be mad mostly yeah. not me i was never mad sure unless i unless i got disqualified i think a team of mine got disqualified at the 
like medal ceremony. Oh no! And I think I I threw a fit. Well, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Why you brought us here just to tell us we disqualified? You're supposed <laughs> to tell us like the day of. Sure. That's that wild. How yeah. long? How long did you do karate for? Um, until I was eleven. So I don't really remember much, but I got that black belt at eleven. Like yeah, they you said did. you couldn't get the second degree till you were twenty something, and I didn't really want to continue. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So, How was that I, for you? I learned a bit. Um, yeah. I went to a lot of tournaments. Oh, cool! How'd you uh, do in those? Forms terrible. Sparring. Uh-huh first place yeah there we go with hurting people (laughs) i'm terrible i broke somebody's bone no way (laughs) what i had to go like dad was that a fever dream i had that i broke a poor girl's like i think wrist he's like no it happened i mean it was her own fault i'm like dad no 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 (laughs) because i was 11 it was my last year of tournaments and they want it. They're like, well, there's no other girls in your age group. So go join the 15 to 16 year olds. Get it. I'm like, sure. And she just had to try to kick me. Or no, I tried to kick her and she tried to block it with her arm. <sighs> and you just snapped her wrist. Broke her wrist. I'm like, girl, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that is amazing. They tell you three points is hitting the head with your foot. So it's like, well, I'm going to go do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting those points. <laughs> I just want to go home. My <laughs> weekends. What are weekends? <laughs> I don't mean to hurt these people. She just got in the way. This is what it is. And all that. <laughs> they teach you not to block it. Don't do that. <laughs> You're not in a movie. You're going to hurt yourself. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, but it does come in handy. I've used that self-defense stuff throughout my life as good people do so i think it's important yeah it works gets you out of situations yeah i'm I'm always a big proponent for martial arts it's it's useful i think it's important i think everybody should know a little bit of self-defense like everyone just across the board and hey you know your kicks work so good for you i don't think i'm i'm that limber anymore (laughs) ever since i was like in seventh grade or something and i hurt my knee i just sure i can't touch my toes anymore i never could it's weird i to this day i'm i'm almost 30 years old and i cannot touch my toes like the I back mean, of the back, the back of my knee gets like super tight i don't Ooh. know what it is yeah it's a weird i don't know i think i'm just built weird i don't okay. think everybody can i never liked it in pe when they told you you had to right right like what does that prove yeah, <laughs> that you can touch your toes, which is how, you know, the metric for anyone's success. Yeah. What instruments did you play? Uh, piano at first. Nice. I have very small fingers, so that, um, I have very short fingers, I guess. So piano okay. was never something that I enjoyed. Sure. Um, plus I did it when I was five. So what ah. five-year-old is going that's right. <laughs> to like something that they didn't want to do. And uh, five-year-olds have even shorter fingers. <laughs> yeah. I'm not Elton John, unfortunately. That's, that's right. Uh, few are. Few are. Oh, my gosh. I I did clarinet. Cool. Clarinets then, are very difficult. I tried that. The whole reed thing. I couldn't wrap my head around. Oh, let me get to more reeds later. Oh, somebody played a bassoon. Yeah. <laughs> or, did you play an oboe? Uh, well, I went from clarinet to flute to bassoon, not oboe. Wow, that's not, those are three very different instruments. Yes. Huh. Clarinet was early on, I guess. I guess, do I count the glockenspiel? I did that in elementary school. There you go. There you go. You got to start somewhere. Most people um, start on the recorder, I hear. I've never played a recorder. Me neither. They brought them in like the year or two after I left like oh everyone's doing recorders now i was like what that would have been so cool but no the poor teachers though they have to hear that oh my god can you imagine (laughs) be the worst be the worst yeah yeah almost as disgusting as a bassoon 
Bassoon sounds like a dying duck. I like bassoons. Hey. Bassoons are cool. They can be. <laughs> it's like when played in when, when played badly, it's a different experience. Yes. Um, so I this is again something where my mom's like, I we need to find something for a scholarship. Sure. Wise. It makes my mom sound really terrible. Um I think I think I, she sounds determined to give you the brightest future possible. Yeah, she she came here from Thailand as a teenager. Yeah, makes total so sense. She's trying to get as much as she can. Plus, you know, scholarships are pretty good for parents. They don't have to pay as much money. That's true. That's true. But bassoon. Um, so I had this knack that up till I was 18, whatever I tried, I seemed to be really good at. Wow. So, How do I get that? No, you don't want to hit like when I turned 18 and I switched majors to animation, mm -hmm. I went to class having to try Maya for the first time, the 3D program. Uh, yeah. And I sat there and I had a meltdown. Oh, no. I couldn't do it for the like, usually I just try something and it goes. Oh, and this, right. I couldn't figure it out. So I had to leave the classroom, went to my car and just sat there and cried. Because sure. I like because you're so used to just naturally picking it up. That when it's yeah yeah that makes sense and they don't teach you when you're those prodigy kids that it's okay to ask for help so that's sure. not something you learn i didn't learn that till way later in college but sure but soon i i like the flute i did the flute for a bit mm -hmm. um i can't remember if that's the instrument i played it gets all blurry because i switched instruments a bit Sure. Um, but I play bassoon because like my mom, I was like, I want to play cello. I want to keep to the bass clef. I, I can okay. read bass clef. So I want to play uh -huh. cello. And my mom's just like, but all the other Asian kids are going to do that. And I'm like, yes, mom. <laughs> she has Shut a up. good point. She has a good point. <laughs> she wanted me to get into the Sacramento Youth Symphony. Uh -huh. Okay. And so if I play bassoon, I would be one of the very few people up against each other so I can get in sure and so, like try the bassoon it's almost the same height as you because I'm five four it's very tall uh-huh uh -huh. I played it for the first time at a lesson learned six notes on the first try and my mom was like well look at that you're gonna be <laughs> fine I'm like no <laughs> uh, I did enjoy it some of it I it's we had to modify it because mm -hmm. you're all thumbs for bassoon Right. And the crutch is too, for the right hand on the bottom, is right. too wide. So we took it off and just made a little cradle for my hand because what? my fingers couldn't reach if I used a regular crutch. So Sure. That's cool. You had like a custom bassoon. Yeah, somebody has it somewhere at the college I went to. I think we sold it off because those things are expensive. You also yeah. have to make your own reeds. Right. I knew how to do that. It was That's cool. Tiresome. They're and weird. learning like how do you do mouth exercises? Yeah. Like, what do you do for that? Because it's the double read for the bassoon, right? It's the same as the elbow. Uh yes, but theirs is a little thinner. Right, I don't right, know right. how to play an oboe. I've never played yeah, it. We neither. had oboe players, but I can't I can't do reeds. I've tried. I played brass really? for a long time. Yeah. Oh yeah. like trumpet? Trombone. <sighs> yeah. I was a I was a trombone player for like seven years. Did like oh all state and jazz band and symphonic band and the local band as well, like in the community. And I was really into it for a long time. Ooh. Yeah. Trombone, trombone's my jam. And then I broke my arm in seventh grade and I couldn't play for, you know, six weeks. So I learned tuba. And at the time I was four foot 10. So the tuba was the same size as I was. So I had to pick that up so that I could reach the valves. And then in high school, I tried baritone, which was super easy. And then my brother played trumpet, and I couldn't, I couldn't get trumpet. The mouthpiece was too small and just required too much air. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah, brass, brass. I've tried clarinet, the whole like roll your bottom lip and then put your mouth on the top. I just couldn't get right. And then rolling both your lips in to do the double read, just, I don't know, my mouth didn't want to do it. I I didn't I didn't really practice it much 
and I had lessons. So I, uh, sure. and they could totally tell that I never practiced. Sure. <laughs> like, when do I have time to practice? when I have so many other things going. That's true. That's true. Go to high school and also take two to three college courses at the same time while doing sports, but also be in the youth symphony. I'm like, yes. Uh, no wonder I learned to not sleep. But goodness gracious. Yeah, double read is, yeah, you got to do your mouth all kind of like a turtle, I guess. Like, yeah, yeah. Stuck in your, roll in your, your lips. lips. Yep. <laughs> you got to roll in your lips just to play the double read. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just mostly you got to move your thumbs a lot. And yeah, sure. I think those, that was the hardest part. Or oh, just, really? or I think the hardest part of playing it is sight reading. I'm not good at sight reading. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I wasn't either. They always do that for your test. And I'm like, no, uh -huh. how do I know? Yeah, yeah, same. So what did you do? You Did you do like jazz, symphonic, marching? Oh, uh, you can't march with a, uh, um, with a bassoon. Sure. But I was in marching band. What'd you play there? I was the, uh, the baton twirler. What? At no Disneyland. way! That's awesome. And we won. <laughs> of course, of course. Wait, do you have really good hand-eye coordination? Uh, <laughs> let's say yes. How how on average? How often did you drop it? Uh, not at all. When I was there, what? this probably got me ready for when, like, one of my first jobs was being a sign waiver. So. That Mind you, helped. how long did you, how long did you do it for? Almost a year. I did it for like four months. Oh. Yeah. It's a wild job. <laughs> I, I liked it in, outside of the heat because it's during the summer usually. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I really liked my boss. He's probably the nicest boss I had at the, like ever. Sure. Sure. He would call me. It's like a hundred degrees. He'll be like, Hey, are you okay? Do you need to go home? It's really hot. Just oh, that was in. nice. And I got health care. What? Yeah, it was. I was like, this is a really wow. like fifteen dollars an hour. Um, in like two thousand eight, sure. in California. I was like, dang, this Get is it. great money. <laughs> yeah, I think I got paid like thirty dollars for the whole time. Every time I did it, it was like two nights a week. And uh, my boss was not as nice. <laughs> and oh. I remember one time he was like, stop spinning the sign because people can't see. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's a good point. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I you just, just put learned music to in. like sit. <laughs> oh, smart. Yeah, I was like standing up and like, mm, hey, everyone, look at my sign. It was, it didn't last long. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I was in a kind of a yuppie neighborhood, so... Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. They were they didn't take kindly to my car being parked on the road. I would have people throw yeah. bikes at me. Oh, they no. like You're in the bike lane. I'm like, I have nowhere else to park. Right. This is my job. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you want from me? And then you pull out like a soccer ball and you're like, You don't want this. You don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> no. I wonder if I could still do that. That'd be terrible. Just I bet you could. out on somebody. <laughs> I bet you're a secret weapon and you don't even know it yet. Uh, this no. is what this is what people don't understand christina you've got the calmness about you that like if somebody wanted to try it they wouldn't be ready for it oh you, like, you, you like, don't just... know me very well oh <laughs> you all think i'm very calm i am right. <laughs> a very neurotic person who constantly like hates everything that i do i doubt myself all the dang time Same. and i often have freak outs and just i walk around in circles going well, i don't know what's happening what do i do ah. <laughs> see that's where it comes it. from you channel it into the ball you know or into your leg that's something that girl had no idea she thought she was just a, in a tournament against somebody else who's just gonna tap her head with her foot no 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 not today boom i don't mean to hurt these people <laughs> Oh, I mean, only the people that like have done something. That's right. Sport. Like if this, like self-defense. Yes, I do mean to hurt them. That's right. Um, because I want to get away. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> hurt them and run. 
that's right. That's that's the plan. That's the plan. So yeah. so you, how long did you play bassoon for? A couple years. Yeah. I I didn't want to continue it anymore. Did I get a scholarship for anything out of any of that? No. Really? I got a scholarship for going to college as a teenager. Um, wow. Governor Schwarzenegger apparently like gave out scholarships for that, but I lost it all because I went to a college that pretty much took it all, oh, and I no. couldn't transfer it anywhere. And I used it for one quarter of the school, and they said, "Yeah, okay, you can't tap into it anymore." What? And I'm like. Oh, I made a mistake. Ten year old me made a mistake going to this college that does not exist anymore. But oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I got out. I got out of that school. I still owe money because it's very expensive. Of course, school. of course. But it, yeah. Um, I I li- I listened to the student music. I just like I moved on. Sure, um, sure. I thought so. There's a thing called Battle of the Bands in my area. Cool. And my dad had done it when he was a teenager because he's a guitar player. Nice. And weird enough, when he did it as a teenager, his singer got sick or something. So he had to get a new singer. And I remember him just complaining about how terrible the singer was. But turns out <laughs> to be my step granddad's daughter. What? Before my dad and my mom got together. No way. It was a very small world, this place. And that's so funny. I thought, well, I'm 17. I should try it. Sure. Learn an instrument in three months oh. and go join Battle of the Bands where you get, you have to audition. They put you in the bands and then you have to create three or four songs and perform it in a few months. What? That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's really cool for kids. I think it's like <laughs> 17 is the last um, year you could do it. But sure. yeah, I wish I could do it now in a way sure. I, yeah i still kept a bass clef so i just nice. didn't want to learn i didn't want to go back so i played bass oh cool so did i Yay. Well, i played bass for like three years nice i never got very good at it how about you <laughs> uh i would say with with guitar i don't uh-huh. like my fingers just coordination just doesn't my brain goes i don't get this sure but sure bass i'm okay i still have a bass guitar nice um, i don't play it as often i don't sure. pra- i don't think i've like touched it in a couple of years <laughs> it's just in a case to be fair you're kind of busy uh, you know <laughs> i'm i i mean i uh, i try to have downtime but it's sometimes hard <laughs> <laughs> what is this downtime you, you're speaking of I want to do so much. Yeah, yeah, same. But bass, bass was fun. Um, I like it. I was it. with a bunch of 14-year-olds, so that was... Perfect. <laughs> I wanted to be in a different band. I wanted to be in the band that definitely liked Panic at the Disco. Uh, of course. And stuff. I got stuck with the boys that liked Metallica. Ah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm like, I don't play this. Because right, I, yeah. <laughs> I auditioned with a Flea type of bass oh, playing. sweet. Slapping the bass. Uh huh. Slapping the bass. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if that movie came out around that time, of two thousand seven, six, or whatever. Maybe but, I have no idea. Yeah, it. But this group also really liked Metalocalypse, so they're like, "Well, you're the bass nice. player." And I'm like, "I have never seen the show, but I get you're going to make fun of me this whole time." <laughs> oh, no. Fine, whatever. Our drummer was really good. Our guitarist was really good. The other guitarist was okay. Our singer sucked. <laughs> so bad. Oh, no. Woof. Oh, my gosh. Is, uh, but weird enough, his mom is a, a voice actor in the area. Oh. So, yeah. It was... Yeah. It, everything's all connected. It's really strange. But yeah, we didn't win because... I think our drummer and guitarist were in the winning band the previous year. Gotcha. But that's okay. Some of the band, local bands, I spent my teenage years going to concerts all the time. Local cool. bands mostly. Sure. And some of those bands taught the kids because we, we all had a, like a, almost a chaperone, an adult that would try to help us. They're usually musically inclined. Sure. 
um yeah so that was that was a weird summer to yeah. spend before 18. Huh. that's pretty uh, cool though yeah try to get as much stuff done as a kid because now it's just like what I, I haven't done anything with my adult life <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't go as many places i'm not as adventurous because i'm way more cautious when i right. got older <laughs> but yeah bass guitar was cool um yeah. yeah 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 so if you're doing all these things when did your interest in movies start like from a i want to work on movies oh Probably not till I was in my 20s. Yeah. Okay. That's cool, though. Um, I feel like I that's me. uncommon. I feel like a lot of people that like want to work in the movie industry from a young age kind of are into it. What was it that, that, that was like the thing? Um, well, I never thought that that was a job that I could do. I learned very, very young that um, from watching behind the scenes a lot and mm. Um, my dad being very interested in voice acting. So I, I knew behind the scenes, I would watch a cartoon and understand that that is somebody voicing it. That's not a real character. Sure. But the, like, I think for my dad, I just like, well, my dad doesn't do it. Um, so, cause he's a software engineer. <laughs> um, right. I don't think I could do this for a living. And plus you have like parents that are like, you every parent wants their kid to have a their grow up be successful have money be yeah i guess um i don't even know the word security uh, security yeah mm -hmm. while film is not secure at all no uh, nope because yeah i was a science major for gotcha even though i switched majors i science i always went back to science it was always that but i i loved film a lot mm -hmm. um I, yeah, so for college, I technically, I guess, making films, yeah, it would be when I was 18. I told my parents when I graduated, or I was about to graduate high school, I don't want to be a, an engineer. I don't want to be a probe engineer. I love it. I love science. I love NASA. I want to work there, but I, I want to go do VFX. Oh, cool. And they're like, why? <laughs> why would you do this? <laughs> and my dad's like, okay, yeah, sure. And that's where I went to the school that doesn't exist anymore and is a huge scam. Gotcha. I don't care what anybody who went to, I just say that about the local one. Yeah. At least, but <laughs> I don't care what those students and teachers say that it's a good school. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Some culinary was great. I, if I went, if this were another world, I'd probably go back for culinary or something that that program was awesome. I really? loved them. They have made great food. I always hung out with the teachers and I had so many recipes from some of the teachers. It was, they were cool. They were strict, but I really liked that program versus what I went into because I can't sure. draw or I mean, I, I try, like I could draw, yeah. <laughs> like I had a portfolio ready, but they didn't care to see it. And it was all anime. Oh, of course. Why not? Because I, I really, I was so into anime back then. Yeah, and yeah. I got in, lasted less than two years. And I think the furthest I got was 3D modeling. Um, two of us almost got expelled because the teacher thought we were cheating because our stuff looked too good. And we both were like the kids that said, this was the assignment. Why are you why would you do that? That's, we just did what you said. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, I do not understand this. Um, plus, there was like a tutorial that taught you how to do it. You mm -hmm. follow it, you, it will look the same. Like, I don't get it. But, yeah. <laughs> so I left and went, <sighs> okay, that school sucked. That took up way too much of my time and money. I, I don't want to draw. And I didn't learn anything about VFX. Because that was like media arts and animation. Mm -hmm. And... So I went over to back to science, right back. <laughs> of course. Um, but I, cause thinking like, yeah, maybe film ish related things is just not for me. Maybe I don't have the patience. I definitely don't have the patience to draw. Right. Right. I had teachers that there was one main teacher that anytime I draw something, which I just drew stuff and like turned it in. 
Mm -hmm. would put stuff on the wall each week and he would have like a bomb sticker and he would stick it on mine every week saying, Christine is the bomb of the week. It's the worst drawing. (laughs) No. So why would I continue when he's not giving me any constructive criticism? And then he failed a bunch of us. And I'm like, why did you fail us? We did the assignments. This is art is subjective, dude. Right. (laughs) Like I got better. (laughs) How dare you? Good God. I thought that was going the opposite direction. Like this is the bomb. It's like, no, "No, this is the bomb. Oh my God. Yeah. That'll help. Good job. They have terrible teachers. And I, I don't know about the film program there. I know people who went there for film. Mm -hmm. Um, they there's they're more hands-on than the school i went to sure but i yeah went right back to science and i can't remember what i switched back to because i was microbiology slash wanting to be astrophysics for a long time Mm -hmm. because i like physics physics is very fun i mean if you come into a physics classroom and your teacher is like okay there is a string across the uh, across the classroom. There's mm-hmm. a little like toy monkey on a bicycle, Sweet. and it's going to go across. And we're all going to spend the whole class trying to figure out how we're going to shoot, like calculate this BB gun and shoot it. Oh, what? Or just exploding things. That's always that sounds like fun. the best class ever. Or getting to touch, like, go into a classroom and have a Tesla coil turn on. And I'm like, should this really be on? It's going into the <laughs> socket. <laughs> Am I going to die today? That's right. <laughs> My time has come. I don't want this to be the the prestige. Yeah. <laughs> Book or movie. Either one. No, thank you. That's right. That's right. But physics was super fun. I think I just doodled a lot. But it wasn't until many years later, not many, a few years later, Mm-hmm. when I I had got gotten into Sacramento State for um, microbiology I transferred okay to there because I wanted I actually wanted to make vaccines oh that's cool and very useful especially yeah. now yeah if I had continued I'd wonder <laughs> yeah what, right <laughs> yeah. you have a hope Christina <laughs> <laughs> oh you don't know I would probably still be in school yeah that's true that's true that I would need like a PhD and a bunch of stuff. Yeah, and never mind. Biology is very impacted because there's a lot of nursing majors and all that. So sure. Even though I, tr- I transferred and had all these biology classes and everything, it would take me another five years to huh. get a bachelor. So it's like, I'm going to switch majors. I love Smart. bio, but no. Yeah. I this. So I went to, I was dating a guy at the time. And he was in communications, digital media. Mm -hmm. So he was technically a film major. And I thought, huh, maybe I could do that too. Not to follow in his footsteps, but it's like, I pretty much, that's all we do is watch movies and TV. Sure. Why not? But trying to tell your parents, I was like, ooh, what if my backup is PR? Because PR was (laughs) something that I almost wanted to do. Okay. Even though I don't like talking to people. Ah. It's, uh, I. Yeah. I used to be like for bands back in the day when I was a teenager. I would, it's not like a roadie, but like the people where you ask the band to like send you stuff and you promote it around your area. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Like a street team kind of thing. Yeah. I was, Mm -hmm. I was on a few street teams for bands back then. That's cool. They're like all American rejects. Um, Hell yeah. I, I was even part of a street team for Bowling for Soup. <laughs> what? Dude. The worst one was a Three Days Grace. Oh, get it. Get <laughs> I'm it. Like, oh, no, that guy. I think they disbanded because he was a drug addict, which is sad. But That'll do it. That'll do um, it. Yeah. Thankfully, was never part of Lost Profits. I almost was. But that <laughs> one, that's the whole different avenue. I'm sure. so glad I did not join that one. Sure. But yeah, bands were, PR was a part, a lot of part of my life, but um, right. uh, yeah. So I was like, mom, dad, can I, I try to give them a life plan, even though I current, I mean, who has a life plan in film? Yeah, for real. I was like, mom, dad, you know, 
uh, I want to be a cinematographer. So nice. I I am sure that I mean, what? Come on, there's not that many women cinematographers. Like I can't name any when I was a teenager. So yeah. <laughs> like, there's got to be room for me somewhere. Right. And try to like explain to them like, okay, here are the places I want to go. Um, I'll figure it out. So they thought I had a plan, but definitely they learned I did not. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. they, my my family does not understand that this field doesn't really have a plan. But yeah, there's no rules. Yeah, it's really I not. think it was mainly my dad and I had a talk, and he's just like, "You really, really like watching behind the scenes, so it makes sense." Right. I'll go for it. That's um, cool. We'll try to support you, <laughs> but <laughs> my dad every time. I have like a bad time on set or something happens. He's like, you could go back for computer science. And I'm <laughs> like, ha, 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 ha. I'm actually two classes away from an associate's degree. And I kind of refuse to. Yeah. It. <laughs> Out of <laughs> Just spite. spite him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I respect that. I respect that. Plus, I just don't understand coding very well. My dad yeah. was like, well, you're nine years old or whatever. That's mm -hmm. how old. Bill Gates was or something when he coded something code something I'm like no <laughs> I'm not Bill Gates dad <laughs> I don't understand any of this so I did take computer science classes as a teenager mm -hmm. but it wasn't until I was in my 20s did I take the rest of it so I went in going Java right <laughs> plus plus oh gosh I do I can read it but I don't know how to write it I don't get this sure I, I don't have the foundation but right it sort of comes in handy because sometimes you have to script stuff or mm -hmm. um, different programs. And you could script things in JavaScript with uh, After Effects. So sure, sure. It worked. Or Maya, mm -hmm. I guess. Because, yeah, it's a, it was a very tough talk. <laughs> it was right. a very, it's still a continuing tough talk because to this day, my grandma's like, you can go back to school to get a real degree. <laughs> but she is one of those like asian grandmas that are like you could be a doctor right right <laughs> why didn't you do that sure like, yeah. no. just wait i just tried wait. i tried i wanted to be like a surgeon and then i watched oh my god this is the weirdest thing so my kindergarten not kindergarten teacher who no <laughs> um not, not him that would be weird uh so when i was in elementary school our librarian would constantly get surgeries oh, and they okay. were recorded on tape what? and she would give it to us why i don't know my mom <laughs> my mom i think just really likes gore because i grew up in a household where you go it's dinner time and we rent something from netflix it came in the mail and it's like cool uh dinner time let's watch saw 2 sure and it's like no mom <laughs> this is disgusting dad hates horror i don't like super gory movies all the time sure. um so we would wa i would watch that in elementary school just the <laughs> surgeries and stuff that's so weird i was like oh maybe i could do this or forensics or something something because i was like well i i probably would kill somebody i'm i don't trust myself to have somebody's life on yeah <laughs> I, I don't i don't trust myself so maybe forensics would be good i watch a lot of forensic files there you I go. could be one of those like coroner people mm -hmm. that uh like determines how they died but then in eighth grade my teacher my english teacher he used to work at a crematorium or something oh okay so for a field trip he took us to his old job oh no and we saw part of the embalming method what and i'm like i don't think i could do this because i can't stand the smell last last yeah. year i couldn't stand the embalming pig smell because we have sure. to like dissect pigs for some reason but uh, no. ew, ew, ew. <laughs> that's that's a lot wow uh he was a fun teacher um, despite that really weird yeah. <laughs> field trip, I guess. Sure. Or him saying, you know, when you uh, when you burn a body, it can sometimes like sit up, so they'll like hit their head in there. And I'm like, that's what my mom told me. What? what? That's so cool. So that's then when thing? I became an animation major slash VFX, I had to use clay, 
and there's like a certain type of clay and I'm like this feels like a dead body everybody and they're like why do you know this Christina <laughs> it was a field trip I'm that's sorry. so weird it's very strange huh so you wanted to be VFX first or cinematographer first uh VFX first I okay. wanted to blow things up <laughs> I mean fair fair <laughs> It's the coolest thing ever. I saw Transformers with the boyfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And I went, I want to do that. Yeah. That's freaking amazing. How the hell do they do all the transformations? That's, yeah. that's so much work. I want to do that. And then learn, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not something for me. Sure. I guess. But it's fine. So then how did you end up in sound? Because that's how we work together. And that's how I know a lot of your side is a lot of it is sound based. How did you land there? Oh, uh, yeah, I tried camera uh -huh. and then learned I didn't like we're all college students and we're all we don't know what we're doing. Sure. I was one of the few people that had no prior experience to filming. Uh huh. Like I filmed something on mini DV in high school. And I did with that, but that's like, that's really nothing. It was like two projects I did in high school. Right. Um, but I, I didn't like working with other people that didn't have an idea of what they wanted on a set. Sure. Makes sense. So if you don't have like a storyboard or at least talk to me before we start filming. Sure. <laughs> Some like, sort of plan. <laughs> I was like the Leslie Nope of every film. I had huge binders. So sure. I, like, if you're not planned out, I don't want to be a part of your project. And yeah. I would turn down projects after college if they didn't want to, like, they just want to go on set and run and gun. Sure. And like documentaries, sure, but not on a film. Cause then the poor editor is going to deal with continuity errors everywhere. Uh -huh. It's not going to be fun. I agree. So I quit that. I did a little bit on my senior projects. I always, I had a uh, screw projects. You had to do all the work. Which always sucks. Yeah. And you're yeah. also dealing with students that just joined the major because they thought it was an easy A. You do the work, they get the A. And that Eesh. just like made me not want to do film anymore. It's like, I thought this is a collaborative effort. I want to go back to biology where we actually work together. Sure, sure. Like the previous semester, it was great. Like, oh, I did a project. We're all in it together. And it, like I couldn't fathom the idea that film was so collaborative and people didn't want to be collaborative. Right. But right. it was college. Sure. So I switched to editing, actually. Okay. Okay. I ended college wanting to be an editor, not sound. That was not what I wanted to do because I didn't understand it super much. Sure. Um, but if you're an editor, you need to have a certain amount of hours back then to graduate um, mm. from that class. Sure. So I did sound on set. <laughs> Because nobody else wants to do it. Oh, okay. And, and you liked it? I didn't trust anybody else to do it. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, none of you are pointing the microphone correctly. It's We weren't taught how to operate anything, really. Cameras, gotcha. maybe a little bit of editing. But I had theory of editing where we watch movies, not in front of a computer where we're learning to edit. We watch mm -hmm. movies and discuss it. So... Gotcha. I, yes, I technically went to a theory school that people like to make fun of. But um, if you just, it's a degree, a lot of degrees, you got to learn everything yourself. So totally. I learned editing on myself, by myself. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would edit pretty much the projects, mostly almost be a director. I tried to be a director, it sucked. Um, <laughs> it was too much fighting. And yeah. He, like a few years later, I think like the editor I had when I was director actually apologized to me about the terrible time <laughs> that oh, we <no>. had. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it was a really terrible time, girl. I did not like it. Right. Because um, then you're like directing people. Like, yeah, I did try directing. And then people mm -hmm. just didn't want to do what I wanted. Not that I wanted to be a dictator. I was just like, hey, everybody show up on this weekend to a land fest. <laughs> We're kind right. of film about right. starcraft too please just show up <laughs> and one guy's like oh that's too far for me i'm like it's a 50 minute drive for me it's a 10 minute drive for you 
That's How right. How dare you? <laughs> do you want to do this or not? It's not that hard. It's a documentary. Documentary right. filming wise feel much easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just wanted to stick to editing because like I had a yeah. lot of control of the project. I really liked it. I hated set audio because my arms hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fair. People like even to this day forget that I exist. They'll just go camera rolling and action. <laughs> and I'll go, oh, cool, no sound. Oh, I, I guess I won't push record. Right. <laughs> but it, I, I took a sound class in, I don't even know if that teacher still teaches there. Um, he, Steve Buss, which is one of my favorite teachers there, mm-hmm. he taught the sound course, which people freaking hated. People hated <laughs> that course so much. Um, it was very math based, it was very technical for the test. Sure. Which, I mean, you kind of have to know some of that, but for, I think it would be much helpful, more helpful if we learned how to operate a freaking boom. Sure, sure. Because I went to college with people with terrible sound. Now people have a little uh, bit better sound. The the new students, the new students are way better than what we had. We didn't have drones. Ugh. Right. Good point. Good point. But uh, um, our course was like, go to class learn technical stuff and other stuff. And then, um, plus it was always fun. It was like a seven in the morning course twice a week. Oh. And he would come in, roll his computer, and it would always be like super massive black hole by Muse. Oh, <laughs> and it was sweet. always fun um, just to wake us up. And sure. our final assignment was to take an episode of Highlander. I wish I still had this. Oh, I wish I still had that project because I have no idea how it sounds anymore. Sure. But it was like, take a few scenes from an episode. We all had the same one. It's been the same project, I think, to this day. And replace all the sounds. Oh, that's cool. It's a yeah, great so exercise. You, yeah, so you learn Pro Tools, but it's not like, and you had to digitize all the sounds. So you had all these CDs, but you had to put the CD into the computer. Uh, and like uh, figure out which sound it was the older harder way which is interesting but sure we had labs so we had students that worked the the sound lab and i would just be there on fridays because nobody would be there there you and go like three to four hours each week um met my best friend there at the nice. time nice for nice. that and uh yeah turned it in Got an A. I think like I got an A in that class and it's really, really hard. So I thought, oh, I kind of like this, but I don't know yet. I think I'm going to stick to editing. I understand that a lot more. Sure. (laughs) It's more straightforward. Right. Um, Outside of like when you have a director that's like, no, that's not how I wanted it to be edited. And you're like, well, I don't, your documentary made no sense anyway. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I tried to help it. Right. Right. Um, Yeah. It's a... yeah, that's cool. It wasn't until after did I try to do post sound stuff. Like I was always interested in post sound in just like as a kid, I would recreate sounds from audio dramas or lightsaber stuff, mm-hmm. mostly by mouth. Sure. As a kid. Of course. But not like, oh, this is my job. I want right. to do this. I re- recording stuff and playing with it. I'm like, no, that wasn't me. Sure, sure. That's cool, though. That's cool that like you kind of I mean, it it kind of mirrors the things you did growing up where you just tried a bunch of different things and then found things that you really liked. So even in the film side, you tried a bunch of different things and then found something you really liked. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Right on. It, right it, on. Took, it took a while. It always does. It always does. But there's no time, you know, no. as long as you figure it, it out. That is what was cool about Sacramento State is that I felt there were older students versus the other film school Mm -hmm. um, who are all like 18 like whenever I worked on their projects they're like oh my god you're 25 yeah how old are you guys (laughs) 18 19 (laughs) oh it feels so old when do you guys are calling me grandma (laughs) that's right (laughs) oh all right let me hold the boom (laughs) I'm still friends with some of them but it just astonishes me some of them are really talented. I think one of them went off. I think she makes like music videos for 
big name artists. She nice. hustles. But good for her. I'm proud of her. Good for her. But for, I don't know. It's Sac State had a lot of older students. I mean, you, I think they, a few years after me mm-hmm. was when I dated another guy. When he graduated, he graduated with a, another person who he was going to college at the same time as his daughter. And so they oh. graduated together. Wow. Family well, affair. That's cool. that's cool. Yeah. I really like that. I was like, oh, man, this this person's so cool. Yeah. We didn't have that, like, ageism thing sure. of, like, oh, I'm 50, therefore I know more than you. Right, like, right. We're all in the same degree. It doesn't really matter. Sure. That's cool. I was literally in the major for a year and a half, and people are like, why did you get an A? I'm like, I, again, I'm a teacher's <laughs> pet. I've been right. friends with the teachers. I need to get an A. I'm that I'm that second grader that's like, oh, we're doing multiplication tables. I have a rap like tape. Yeah. <laughs> up to 12 times. I'm gonna bring that to class. Beautiful. Like, Beautiful. No, Christina, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it worked out. It worked out. So from the time that you realized that you wanted to do sound, how long was it before you started like getting your own equipment and going out and recording sounds and messing with it and doing the things you're doing now? I think just a couple years ago. Yeah. Not too long ago. Cause I kept to editing and it made more sense to be an editor in my area because post sound is not a job that people think of. Right. Um, they think because it's so indie and everybody's so used to this with small teams, when you're sure. the editor, you do coloring, editing, sound and music. Right. You're doing a whole post-production. Yeah. So having to hire another person, they don't want to do that. Or they don't, if like, I get so many messages that say, so you do sound design. I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. So set, I'll see you Saturday. And I'm like, no, 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 no. (laughs) Sure. I, uh, and I also didn't want to buy all the equipment for set. Yeah, that's fair. Those are, they have giant carts. People Mm. have like, when yep. you get to the professional level, it's cards. You have like those antenna fins. And yep. like, I don't even know the super good technique to blob a person. Sure, uh, sure. I always had like the really thick Sennheiser ones. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Difficult to stick on people, especially when it's hot. Yeah. And, and you just hear in the microphone, Christina fell off again. I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. But I started <laughs> using medical tape over the years. Yep. Um, because. Yeah. Because, I, I, yeah, I used gaffer tape because that's what would just stick on people, not knowing what to use. I'm a, I would use yeah. medical tape. No, it would be like gaffer's on the, never on skin. I try not to do that. Yeah. Uh, medical tape because I worked on, I worked for Smosh for a short time. Oh, right on. YouTube channel and learned that um, sometimes people can be allergic to certain tapes. Oh. So medical tape is the kind of go-to so I thought, sure. oh, I should buy medical tape because I keep getting hired. Well, I say hired. It's a lot of the stuff is free because this city is very hobbyist. Sure. A lot of like I do not fault these people for having day jobs and this is what they do, but they call themselves filmmakers. And I'm like, if you got a day job, you can pay me. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> like, no, come on. You're right. Uh, but I, yeah, I didn't want to pay for all the set stuff. Um, yeah. I mainly boomed everything with just a Sennheiser um, or no, no. Well, yeah, it's a mixture of Sennheiser, Audio-Technica, like shotgun mic. And that's it. Like I work on a Western and to Uh this day, I'm like, I did that all with a boom and not a single lob. Yeah, you did. You should. It sounded okay. I'm surprised. Sure. Because, yeah, I don't, laws are so tricky. I don't know. Everybody wants to film down in downtown Sacramento, which has a lot of radio towers. Mm-hmm. And those those dang Sennheisers that I hate, they, there's so much, like, the frequency problems, the radio towers, I think, is what, I'm going to blame it on this. Sure. <laughs> and so it doesn't connect. And once they walk away from me, it just constant hiss. And I'm like, I don't know what's uh, causing it. Sure. It's a lot of airwave stuff going on. Yeah. And plus I didn't like being on sets. And if my equipment decided to take a dump for a few minutes, 
you like what you thought were your friends at the time would constantly be in front of everybody on a set and go wow christina your stuff's broken again hmm she Seems normal and i'm like i'm trying to fix it just give me a second you're making me sure. angry yeah. they like liked making me angry which was terrible so it's like i i will fix this i think that's right. why i never really use my h4n anymore because it just stopped working one day oh no and then it like took half an hour for it to boot up again sure and plus it takes way too long to to turn on so uh -huh. it was never very good for sets for me sure um, sure yeah i just don't like the hustle and bustle of sets and the equipment and being forgotten so i just moved over to post using mm -hmm. the same equipment because i never owned wavs sure and just recorded what i saw started seeing people on twitter or slack channels that would record stuff around their house so i thought oh i should do that thinking i was going to do it every day in quarantine but <laughs> I'd, i'm still learning like what is a cool sound sure because um, anytime i hear it it's just like oh i didn't i i can't turn on the recorder in time right right what what is it about sound that like intrigues you so much um because it's a lot of work that you do and like nobody would do that amount of work as well as you do if they didn't find some sort of enjoyment in the process i sometimes i enjoy editing way more but then i just don't like the whole fast turnarounds sometimes sure. but sometimes i'm like i should just stick to editing i still i love both sometimes i'll do both i love it but yeah sound um I like the enjoyment that I can create something that sounds like it fits into a scene. Sure. But I also like that it's kind of like how editing is. I really loved editing because like you could create, you can help make an audience feel a certain emotion just by how you, you cut. Yeah. And in a way sound helps with that. They go together. Sure. So if, whatever I do goes like fuses with editing and it works. I feel mm -hmm. proud, but I don't know. Sometimes it's just like, Oh man, this sounds really cool or recreating sounds. Those are always fun. Like yeah. I went to Sac State for a couple years switching majors there, but there's a bridge behind and I had no idea the whole time I was there. Like, cause I, I would look at behind the scenes, but not really sound stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that, like Ben Burt hit like a, a guy wire, I thought, we kind of have that at the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Why did it take me so long to figure that out? Cause I, sure. I'm not going around hitting things. That's not right. <laughs> what I did. Um, except once I did a film art project in college and it was just a lot of bicycle pump sounds and weird stuff. Sweet. So that's film art completely sure. different weird medium right i don't know i just really like creating stuff that sounds like it fits or trying to i like the idea that i i'm constantly learning something i'll never be like the master i don't think anybody can be a master of it it's right it's a weird learning thing that no matter how much i try i'll continue learning something even if i make a mistake and i I love that even if I, I post really stupid things on Twitter or something, the sound community online is so welcoming and nice and helpful. Sure. That makes so a difference. I, it felt like, like, oh, maybe I do fit in here even though I'm older and I'm trying to get into a field that's mostly younger people are probably going to get the assistant jobs first. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But most of the people in the industry are older. So that's, that's true. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's sound nice. is it's fun. It's I used to go on a walk every day and carry a uh, I would have a fanny pack. Love and it. And I would carry a little H one cool um, recorder. And if I found a sound, I would do that. Sometimes it would freak out neighbors. <laughs> but uh, my garbage man found me very strange. That's okay. That's okay. And he hauls ass during like down the street. I'm like, yeah. stop going so fast. I don't want to run after you. Just stop. Sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 
it's like the little joys. I love the little joys of just hearing something I never thought would go, oh, that that would be a cool sound. I don't know what for, but. Sure. Cool. It like opens you up to the idea of creativity. Yeah, because I came from a very non-creative background of science. Sure, sure. Where there is a yes and a no. There's a correct answer. Yeah. And there's not a correct answer. <laughs> sure. So it's I'm like the possibilities that. of sound is what really gets you. Yeah. Because I'm cool. still learning that there's no right or wrong, really, in yeah. sound. Totally. Unless you're, you're, you, you know, your dialogue sounds like crap because you're yeah. using camera audio. I can't yeah. fix that. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a wrong way with certain things. But like creating stuff, I don't think so. Sure. What is your, like, what's your kit right now? What equipment are you using that you enjoy? Uh, it's very small. <laughs> I mean, um, that's good. Small's best, in my opinion. I I think that's also why I really like the um, the sound community because they don't belittle me for what I have. Sure. They Because, uh, like, when I wanted to be a camera person, people on set are like, you only have a 5D Mark III. Right. Yeah, Is that elitist thing? Where's yeah. your red? Like, yeah. I, where am I going to get a red? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you going to pay for it? <laughs> Those things are expensive. Yeah, My favorite is a lot of people here are using Black Magics. And uh, oh, what the audio on those dang things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. The first movie I was ever in was shot on a Black Magic. And the biggest problem is the audio. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because I, I think like the older models didn't really have like a good built-in microphone i think that none of them have a good built-in microphone right because you kind of need it to sync up audio later yep. but most of the times with black magics when i would have to sync up audio for editing there would be no camera audio and i'm like mm, how oh, do i boy. and sometimes no slate and you're like no oh no uh my Ugh. favorite are the no slates i uh. worked on a film a couple years ago with no slates and no camera audio and i'm like mm, oh no there goes my life yeah but in college i didn't know you could sync up like in premiere you can try to sync it up just oh. in there i've had to do it by hand in college and i didn't mind it i still don't mind it uh-huh but um Oof. for sound i really yeah i there's not really an elitism with mm -hmm. the sound community there it's almost like they appreciate that you're trying to use what you have sure they're sure. not like yes they they love gear everyone loves gear and their plugins or whatever uh -huh. <laughs> rolly light pad they're all buying <laughs> like, yeah sure. that's fine i have minimalistic stuff i mm. i have an h6 which i've Ooh. had since 2005 there you go it was like my first uh present after college cool um outside of the microphone so right my dad sort of knows microphones from his voiceover years cool so the microphone i use is a sennheiser mkh 416 which is more of a shotgun microphone mm -hmm. can be used for voiceovers depending on who you talk to um right but that and i i think like a year after college i bought a blimp oh which sweet is the the fuzz, like you in my profile picture there's like a fuzzy thing yeah um so i put the microphone inside of it i put the fuzzy windscreen which they call they call it a dead cat for smaller microphones i think road calls that a dead wombat <laughs> i guess but it's I'm for like it. for wind protection because i've been on sets where it's just so windy and the foam thing just does not help yeah this thing sort of helps but mm-hmm it can't, it can't do, I think, more than 10 mile per hour, maybe. Gotcha. Ending. It's like, it's not magic, but it's better yeah. than foam. Yes, it's yeah. way better, but it is a couple hundred dollars. And like the microphone is like a thousand dollars. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then people <sighs> are like, Christina, you got to get a Shopes or whatever. And I'm like, you know, I'll get it. I'll get it when I get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how I felt about like my... My podcasting microphones. I got the Audio Technicas. Same. The 2035s because. Nice. I was like, well, it's kind of like how I bought 
a camera. So if I think about buying a cheaper camera, I can have enough money to buy lenses. Sure. Sure. But I got lucky. My mom has a bunch of like series one Canon L lenses from the t- early 2000s. Nice. So that's what I used in college, but get it. Yeah. So I bought two audio technicas because I thought I was going to do interviews in person yeah. <laughs> and then COVID hit <laughs> instead of buying one sure microphone. Right. Fine. I deal with more background sounds with the audio technica, which mm-hmm. I can deal with because I'm learning. There you go. I'm learning how to deal with it. But, there uh, you go. And then like a boom pole, yep. which I think is a K Tech boom pole, which is not the best because it has, I hate it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it has the coil inside. Ah. Uh. And that stuff can, it's like when you actually take it apart, it looks like an old rotary phone like handle. Oh, weird. It gets disgusting in there. And I've had other people use it while I mix, they boom. And they just slam it down when they like untwist it. So uh, one guy even left like oil prints because his hands were so oily. It was disgusting. Oh, no. Yeah, it was very weird. Um, But yeah, that's that's about it. That's all I've got. And like some stands. Sure. I mean, honestly, what more do you need? You're doing really cool stuff with what you have. That's what I find is the key. It's not what you have. It's what you do with what you have. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that actually brings up a great point. So when did you come up with the idea for the closing credits podcast? Oh. um, Because you know I'm a big fan. No. I am. I am. Legally. It's on my my driver's license and everything. Yeah. I I, actually, I have I'm staring at your interesting podcast sticker on my yeah. water bottle right so, now. So so you understand. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Um, come listen to my terrible audio. Um, on hey, my listen, 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 listen to half of the interesting podcasts. <laughs> it's, I do yeah. not do sound. <laughs> yeah, people always are so confused. Like, oh, you got Gary Rydstrom on your podcast, but it's phone audio he doesn't have his own equipment in there not everybody has equipment at home exactly they're not all tim nielsen with his huge collection of microphones right He's right all sky sound. uh-huh uh-huh um it actually if we go far back it started as a very selfish idea so <laughs> do mine uh, <laughs> yeah it's i i went to celebration a few years ago with a friend sweet and uh, at the time and we she really wanted to interview celebrities she really wanted to talk to celebrities like that's who she loves she wanted to meet actors versus me who is like i want to meet behind the scenes people instead right right so we thought what can we do that can compromise both of that and we can go to celebration and it would be cool we get to meet these people sure so we try to come up with some sort of interview segment but we could never come up on a topic Uh uh-huh so and plus it'd be a lot of camera equipment a lot of like microphones to bring around it'd just be a lot and i didn't want to do video so after that celebration ended i and then another one ended Mm -hmm. i like we ended up splitting up we're not friends anymore that's what projects can do to you like yeah. you work your your best friends and then you end the project just so stressed out you're not friends anymore and it it's happens. true it's true maybe we'll be friends again later just like some other people from college like we're now friends uh, after all these years of we fought so much sure but sure i was like man maybe because though i'm a communications major technically digital mm-hmm. media Sure. I was like, I'm not very good at talking to people. I feel like I'm not, I'm not. I very disagree, good. but go on. I, I'm not, I don't know. I'm very <laughs> nervous. I'm better at public speaking or used to be much better. And so I thought, well, I didn't really learn very much in college about film. So mm-hmm. I thought, okay, take the, take the interview idea, learn how to, better communicate in that sense and converse with people that I don't know. If I go to a party, I'm not going to talk to anybody. Yeah. That's same. How I am. <laughs> right. I mean, like, I don't know these people. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why did I get invited to a party? Yeah. <laughs> and, and that way I could also get to know these people 
Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. It's also, you know, job opportunities maybe, mm-hmm. but really it's also me picking their brains and I also want to know what they do. And the, that took forever though. I was like, well, how do I, that, because it's that whole, how do you differentiate yourself from everybody else that also has a podcast? And especially yeah. now, everybody has it. a dang podcast. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> I, I had a friend recently said like, oh, yeah, I'm going to start a podcast where it's my friends and I just shooting the shit. And I'm like, That's <laughs> what everybody does. Why, why would that be interesting? Like, yeah. do you think you're interesting enough? That's why I have other people talk. I don't right. I'm not interesting, so boom. Right there with you. Right there <laughs> with you. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, um, the title took forever to come up with. But... It's a good one. It's so long. Like, I like all I it. could think of is the marketing side of me going, Christina, it's too long. It's too no, long. it's not. It's good. I like. I love it. I love a good title, and uh, the closing credits podcast is genius, especially for what you're doing. I I love it. I try. Somebody actually has the same title, but I figured they don't have a the at the beginning. Oh, nice. And. They kind of stopped a couple years ago. So yeah, that's that's the key. I think there was another interesting podcast that popped up, oh. uh, and they did like two episodes, and that was it. And it wasn't that interesting. And I was like, okay, I was like, I've been here for almost six years. <laughs> no. By all and means, you're doing great. I love your I love your podcast. It's great for my walks because I oh, try to. Good. I haven't taken a walk in a while because of all the rain, and then I became very busy. Um, trying yeah. to take like an hour long walk around my neighborhood, mm-hmm. um, which is fun. Cause sometimes you run into the same people depending on the time of day. Right. Right. And it's, it's good. Cause it's though your podcasts are a little bit longer. I, yeah. I understand my podcasts are kind of long, but yeah, it's the way to go. I yeah. like, I like long podcasts. Yeah. You get, to, you get to learn to... more about them. Exactly. Exactly. That's something that I love about your show specifically is like, you're you're learning you know i mean you're figuring out all these things and like the intricacies of these jobs that you might not know anything about from people who have been doing it for a long time it's really cool i do want to interview people who are new also you should you should that would be an interesting one and i i kind of want to dip into video games i've been do thinking it. about that really do hard it. do it please because i feel bad because right like all a lot of my episodes are the same job titles and that's not my fault but it's actually not it's not me reaching out to these people somehow i've had like 25 episodes and way earlier into it i got a bunch of pr companies working for me or working with me nice and they always send me the same job titles of editor (laughs) and i'm like oh i've had enough editors can you give me like somebody else right i don't know how to ask them through the credits (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah. thankfully i think there's a new pr company that's like oh we do composers and i'm like oh, i haven't had a composer yet yes and perfect is there <laughs> is there one credit that you are really looking forward to getting to oh i have not eh. hmm best boy yeah it's got to be that one <laughs> It's gotta be right. I haven't run into one yet. It's got. It's gotta be. That's the one I always think of. I'm like, when you. That was the first thing I thought of when it's like closing credits podcast. I was like, oh, maybe we'll finally learn what a best boy is. That should be the last episode. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's your swan song. <laughs> Make everyone wait. That's I, right. I did have a guest actually tell me that he really liked the idea of the podcast, but he can't. He wants to go into the future, and he really wants to hear me interview like a parent or something of like a kid actor oh interesting like, oh maybe it's probably because he worked on pen 15 which he has to deal with a bunch of got it kids, so yeah i'm like yeah i don't i think one of the girls one of the kid actors from there does follow me but i i feel weird like wanting to reach out to people under 18 yeah yeah same so same. Maybe someday. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till they hit 18 and then talk to them about their time when they were a child actor. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, the, that could be it. That's the key. Yeah. That's pretty I good, don't though. understand being a kid actor. I 
I tried acting. <sighs> my mom's like, this will make you not shy. And I'm like, <laughs> psych. No, it yeah. <laughs> You're like, that's not how that works, mom. <laughs> you go to the, you go to the play and the other person's talking. And then I start, it's like, Hi. yeah, everybody's <laughs> like, Oh, Christine's talking. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right there yeah. with you. I'm so soft-spoken. That's why I married a nurse. She's yeah. like, when we order at restaurants, I just point to the menu and Monique orders for me because the waiter can never hear me. <laughs> uh, they always, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I get that with my name. I was called Kristen. Really? In my life because they don't hear the A. Uh... So for the longest time, I would say, my name is Christine No. <laughs> just so like, <laughs> people hear the A. No, I didn't like Kristen. What? <laughs> Why does she say it like that? <laughs> Please understand there's a day. You can call me Chris because like that Argentinian soccer player. Uh huh. Because he was a soccer player, but also my coach. He would call me Chris. Okay. So that that stuck. But then we had way too many Chris's in school. Too many right. Christinas in school. Mm, gotcha. We else had it with a K too, and I'm like, no. Sure. That's my name. That's right. There can only be one <laughs> as you grab your basketball. <laughs> no i did date that girl's boyfriend not boyfriend oh dated her brother i was oh was there you boyfriend. go so we would joke that if i got married to him his sister and i would have the same name <gasps> you're right terrible then there really could only be one probably i'll just keep my last name i don't want his last name you're right. <laughs> and, yeah 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 i get it i get it well, hey, look what we just did, Christina. <laughs> it's been, I have no idea how long because I don't pay attention to when I start recording these things anymore. But Me neither. You, look at this. You, you, we, <laughs> you're on the interesting podcast. It happened finally. Uh... I've been trying to make this happen for way too long. Have you? Yes, a very uh... long time. Like you, when did, you must regret it. Not at all. I'm so glad this happened. I, I mean, I'm scared of you now. Um, <sighs> like if we're ever near any sports balls, uh, I will don't be offended if I take a few steps back. Um, but no, I, I think you're fantastic. I tell you that all the time. It was a joy to work with you on the Zoland art. And I still don't fully understand uh, all the way that you do all your magic, but it seemed to have worked. So that's pretty cool. You know, yeah. you came on after we worked together. So that's good. <laughs> you know, as we mentioned, <laughs> working together can make or break uh, relationships. And it seems that, uh, you know, we're still all right. <laughs> I, I hope so. I think so. You know, no, this was this was really cool. I am so glad that we finally uh, guilted you into making this happen. Uh, but before I let you go, I have to ask. Uh, where can people find you online? Where can they find your podcast? What you got? Uh, you can find me online on Twitter and Instagram with my first and last name, Christina Morris. And uh, it's just that. It's super easy. Even my website is just my first and last name, dot com. Super easy. Beautiful. Get that SEO. I, I It's great having <laughs> somebody in the family change m-o-r-s-e a hundred years ago to ss so it's yeah super, super cool beautiful uh podcast i think it's everywhere i'm still confused with the google stuff um because yeah. i keep getting emails saying google music's gone i'm like i don't know what that means yeah <laughs> me neither um, but yeah it's closing credits pod.com and should be on all the streaming platforms that i tried to get onto and Sweet. at closing cred on Twitter and Instagram. Genius. I love it. I love it. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. 
If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.